Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have yet another viewer request video. This more about for data engineers or you know really anyone in the data space that is struggling with collecting and translating business requirements and information from business stakeholders into a technical data product. Um, this is you know a big problem with a lot of data engineers, especially early in their careers, where you know you know how to make really cool pipelines, but you know how to make pipelines that really effectively capture what a business is looking for. Um, and that is what we're going to go through today, give you a framework of saying, hey, this is how you can collect those uh, business requirements, then translate them into the technical steps that you want to go through to actually you know, deliver whatever that end result is, that data product, um, and then also making sure you can validate that with those business stakeholders to make sure that you, know, that you don't go away for three months and come back and they say, hey, this isn't what we we're actually looking for, go start again. Um, so. Without further ado, let's jump into it with step one. Now, the first thing you want to think about is understanding the larger business context. So not just the actual you know, problem you've been asked to solve. Hey, I want to see you know, a collection of customers in the Northeast region with above 500 employees. You really want to ask, hey, what is the business objective or outcome this data will support, right? And you know, in that case, the business outcome of getting a bunch of customers is, hey, I want to get the hottest leads that are most likely for my salespeople to be able to get a deal out of. Um, and with that, you know, you want to understand, hey, what are the key metrics and KPIs involved in the outcome of that data? You know, how many new deals do you expect to result out of this new data set that's been generated? Um, and then you also want to understand the business pro process. How are you going to serve this data to these internal users? How are you going? How are they going to access it in a way that's you know human readable to them? Right? They're not data engineers. They don't necessarily know how to parse through large data sets. So you need to understand, hey, how do they expect this data to be delivered? What happens if this isn't delivered? And you know what is the timeline and what decisions are being held up by this not being done? So here it's really good to just have you know a short business summary document, um, you know one to two paragraphs, and also a list of business stakeholders with their respective roles. So you know you know who you're actually going to be delivering this to. So you have an idea of you know hey is this a technical user? Is this a non-technical user? Is this you know someone that's able to parse the data on their own, or do I need to be very specific with showing them hey what is the outcome that I'm trying to present? Now the next thing you're going to want to do is actually go out and facilitate more requirements gathering sessions. So you know you might have one person who you know a team lead come and ask you for this data set, but you want to go out and involve actually you know hey business owners who you know maybe the marketing lead that in this lead example right is collecting the data from all these different customers right understand how they collect data and what kind of filters they have on actually the data that you might actually be using, um, and then also. Any downstream consumers, you know, anyone that is going to be reading this data, uh, that is going to be consuming, hey, this new list of customers, understanding what they expect out of it, not what their manager expects them to expect out of it, but actually the user himself. Um, and then also any you know subject matter expert. Um, this isn't really relevant for that simple deal case, but let's say you know I wanted to understand performance for my website, right? And I wanted to say, hey, you know, my marketing team needs to understand what web pages are performing slowly. I would likely need to go to my web design lead to go understand, hey, how is this measured? What are the KPIs here? Um, so that I can collect that data that's actually around those relevant KPIs. Um, and here, you know, you're going to be asking things like, hey, you know, what systems, fields, data sources do you want to be involved in this? What questions are you trying to answer with this data? Are there rules, filters, aggregations that should be applied? Um, what should the final data set look like? Um, how frequently should it be, should it be refreshed? Um, and you know, how how do you want to you know consume the data actually downstream? Um, and here, you know, also using you know kind of whiteboarding or you know very simple mock schemas for discussion um, for visual workflows is is really helpful here to help people understand. Hey, this is a workflow that I'll be consuming, and what's actually going to be built on the back end. Now in step three, what you want to do is now take all those requirements you gathered in the previous two steps and start translating them into technical specifications. Um, so a really good idea here is doing source to target mapping. You know, understanding, hey, what data is coming from where, how it's going to change, um, setting data contract and schema specifications, setting actual orchestration plans of, hey, this is the batch schedule, this is the trigger logic we're going to use, this is the platform we are going to use for running this, um, and you know this. Also, you want to set success criteria here. You know, hey, we're going to deem this pipeline successful when X dashboard updates daily with the correct information, right? Um, and really just understand, hey, for each of those specifications you have, translate them into what the exact technical route is to implement that in your mind and create flow diagrams that are easy to understand for, you know, non-technical users to at least say, hey, you know, I can see that all of these business requirements are being 
met, even if I don't necessarily understand exactly how they're being met because you know they're not a technical user. They just care about the outcomes, not the actual how it happens. Now the next step is you know borrowed from software engineering, and that is really the idea of you know product validation, right? Um, and here you know you want to basically you know not build out a full product, but ensure mutual alignment and eliminate any kind of misunderstandings clearly by reviewing that requirement summary document, you know whatever you've collected and you know built out that flowchart of hey these are the business requirements, this is the technical how we're going to do this, and this is the outcome we're going to present. Set up a review meeting with those stakeholders that initially had requested this job and ask them to, hey, do you confirm these inputs? Do you validate that these are the problems we're trying to solve for? Um, and then also, you know, review some mock outputs, you know, make up some very simple, they don't need to be actual functional, but just mock, you know, diagrams of how this flow would work, how this data would be presented, so they can say, hey, this is actually a good way of presenting that data, so you don't waste time building out a nice fancy dashboard that then someone throws out um, and doesn't ever actually use, right? I've seen that happen many times, and it's a lot better to have that happen before you've built out the back end and when you just have a wireframe of that dashboard rather than a true dashboard. Um, and so here you're know, using something like Figma for data flow diagrams is really useful. But the goal here is just to validate and get sign off on all of the technical you know, plans that you've made. Do those actually align with what those business users wanted? Is this going to answer their questions? Is it going to meet their business needs? And is it going to do so in a consumable and efficient way? Um, if so, then you're good, you're golden, and you've de-risked your project a lot, right? And just like a MVP, you know, instead of having to spend a lot of dev hours if it doesn't work, you can validate this is going to work and then invest the time after that. So now that you've gotten your requirements done, start building. Build out a very simple MVP, you know, build out the first iteration of what your project is going to look like and start setting up feedback loops, right? So, you know, build that first 0.1 version baseline, send it out to those business users and then set up metrics collections like usage metrics. Hey, how often is this dashboard actually getting viewed? How often are these queries being run if it's more asynchronous, right? Um, and then analyze and understand, you know, collect feedback, you know, have a Slack channel, a GitHub issues um, and schedule, you know, hey, monthly or quarterly check-in periods post delivery to understand, hey, is this actually providing value? Um, are people using this? You know, backing it up with data, understanding, hey, are, are people using this? Can we see a lot of dashboard views? Can we see a lot of runs? Or is this a dashboard that's just sitting there being refreshed, but never actually being viewed and thus just consuming money for no real purpose, right? You know, in a business, it's not about just making cool dashboards, it's about making dashboards that are actually going to drive business outcomes and make you more money. So if you have a dashboard that's just sitting there looking pretty, building a lot of, you know, cool dashboards, right? And, but it's not actually you know, driving any business impact, no one's actually using it, it's a waste and you're gonna to wanna to cut it. So it's really important to have these kind of feedback loops that are running on a regular basis to understand, hey, as this business evolves, as new needs come up, as you know, the data that you're actually using changes, um, how are you evolving your data sets and your data products to meet those, right? You're gonna to need to be pruning some of them over time and creating new ones. It's a constant cycle of evolution, especially at you know a startup, right? Larger organizations you might not be dealing with as much, but really any organization, you're gonna have some kind of feedback loop. It's just whether that feedback loop is measured in weeks, months, or years. Um, and so it's really important to, after you deliver that data product, also keep collecting, keep understanding how that data product is being used and find, hey, are there ways I can make this more consumable? I could make, do I need to you know, set up an email that blasts this out rather than having people come to this dashboard? There's a lot of different ways that you can fine tune data products to make them more consumable and to meet business users where they are, which is really what it's all about. Meeting the business users where they are because they're never gonna be data engineers and so it's our job to give them data that they can understand without understanding data. Um, so I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.